So one of the things that's interesting about about play and 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 children, right, is um, when kids get together and play, one of the things that they do is not just play by the rules, they invent the rules, right? They mm. come up with new rules, yeah. and that's a big part of the, the learning process, that's a big part of the experimentation of play. And I think it's really interesting, when they, one of the first things that people did when they had a graphical display attached to a digital computer in the early 60s, first thing they did was invent a game to play on it, right? They invented <laughs> Space War, right? Yeah. And, <laughs> All these innovations came out of Space War that were then used for non-game yes. inventions of computing, about open source software, about graphic interfaces, and it came out of like, well, we've got this, we've got this million dollar tool, what can we do with it? Well, let's play a game. And that, yeah. I think people dismiss it and they're like, oh, stupid games. But in fact, that was hugely generative in, in creating new ideas. So, my feeling is that when we watch children playing, we, we know that that's very important for children. Children learn about the world by playing. You know, they, you pretend to be this and I'll pretend to be that and then we'll do something together. Or let's, let's make this the soldier and this is the tank and there's the, there's the other guys there and they're hiding behind this rock, you know. Um, so what are kids doing when they do that? They're, they're doing a lot of things. First of all, they're learning to imagine, which is the most important human talent. That's, that's what everything else comes from the ability to project into the future and to examine in one's mind various possible futures. So, so that's the first thing. Even if that were all you were doing when you played, that would be, that would be quite enough, enough. Yeah. yeah. But in fact, you do other things as well. You investigate how materials work, how relationships work, how um, strategies work, how you, you really are learning. It's, it's the most um, solid education and we, um, stop people doing it and send them to schools effectively. One of the key components of gameplay for kids is inventing the rules yes, as you go along. Exactly. Right? Not just playing by the rules and listening to what the umpire tells you to do, but actually saying, okay, what, what are the rules of this game? Yeah. That is so much of the, the fun and the exploration and, the, and the, I suppose the innovation yes. of gameplay. And kids get that kind of drilled out of them the further they get along. We, when we think about play, we, we regard it as trivial, but actually it's the most important thing we do. So anyway, the, my phrase is um, children learn through play and adults play through art. So I think when we, when we make or experience art, we're actually doing the same thing that children do. But of course we don't want to call it play because we're grown up, right. so we call it art or something instead, or fashion or whatever. And I think it's exactly the same process. We're investigating um, ways of being and ways of seeing and ways of thinking about things. So this overlaps into a second role of art, which is art as simulator. So to give you a very obvious example of that, novels of someone like Charles Dickens, where what he presented to a middle-class audience in late Victorian England was a vision of London, which none of them had ever seen, probably. Yeah. They didn't really know about it, or they knew about it, but hadn't thought about it. And, and so a whole lot of that group of people just got dubbed as the outsiders. Yeah. So, so when Dickens makes those outsiders have thoughts and feelings and emotions quite like the, his readers would have had, um, that's a real simulator. You know, suddenly people are entering those slums and those workhouses and debtors' prisons and so on. And being able to do it without getting dirty, <laughs> yeah. without being right. frightened, without being molested or mugged. Um, so another kind of simulator is science fiction where somebody proposes a possible alternative reality and then you kind of go through it with them in your mind. What would happen if, yeah. what would happen if everybody knew what was in everybody else's mind, for example? Yeah. Okay, oh, well, this would happen and that would happen. And, you know, that's, that's a way of thinking about what consciousness is or yeah. what society is, if you like. So all of those things are, are really ways of learning that we, um, we replace by this particularly useless way of learning <laughs> called education. <laughs>